Oh my gosh, y'all. Crows are still freaking out about this bobcat. That was a close call, y'all. I was about to eat breakfast and I heard the chickens going crazy. Welcome back to the channel, by the way, y'all. Thank you for being here. I was startled by the chickens going crazy. They were just gap, gap, gap. They're normally like really quiet. I came out here and I thought there might be like, uh, there's been a, like a local cat, like a neighborhood cat that's kind of come in and mess with them. When I walked outside, there was a bobcat on top of the run. As soon as it saw me, it, it jumped off. I kind of like peeked around the corner and it jumped off and then I ran around the other side, got my camera and I was able to film it. Girls, that's a exciting way to start your morning, don't you think? I'll go ahead and take that thank you for building an excellent run here. That bobcat circled this thing a few times. I unfortunately didn't have my uh, my my little game camera running. It just kind of slunked off into the woods over here. I think this might be the same one I've seen on the cameras before, but it was pretty good size. Because we've had so much flooding lately, that normally brings, because we back up to a lake, that normally brings a lot of creatures into our yard and usually we'll get pigs and deer. And we always have foxes that are around, but that's the first time I've actually seen a bobcat like in action trying to get at our chickens. But now that that thing knows that there's three plump chickens in here, I'm sure that he will be back. Here's the problem that I was faced with. <laughs> I always have this issue. Do I face that moment without the camera and I was gonna grab my bow? Cause I've wanted to get a bobcat with my bow. That would just be, that would be something really, really cool. I could have done it cause I was sneaking around the house. It would have been, I could have got it done. I, I have this great deck up here that acts as cover and it's, you know, obviously opens up a lot of lanes out here in the yard. So if I was able to get up there with a bow and just with it circling, I think I could have got it done and be easy, like 18, 20 yard shot. But I grabbed my long lens so you guys could see it. So just go ahead and smash that like button for it, please. And the other unfortunate thing is I was gonna move uh, a lot of the chicks out here today and the duck, I mean, they're just getting huge y'all they're at about four weeks now really they're they're about ready to go in and integrate with the other chickens about five weeks but a couple of them are a little bit farther ahead our easter eggers are so i wanted to get them out here and they already have most of their adult feathers so they can handle the climate right now it's like in the 70s but with that little flimsy thing i don't think so and i have a whole nother coop and run that i could put them in but it's just man it's a risk it's definitely a risk so I've got this one right here that is pretty safe. It's pretty enclosed, but still, y'all. I mean, there's daggum sharks out there in the woods. And I'm still bummed about my Mississippi trip getting canceled. That was gonna be, it was like gonna kick off the crappie for me for the season. So now I'm just trying to figure out like, where can I go and attack both? And honestly, y'all, with this uh, Corona situation, I've thought about just go ahead and freeze locking a bunch of fish. Like go out, start catching, you know, a dozen fish or so and put them in Ziploc bags so we can have fish fries. Just in case, I mean, we have a lot of deer meat here and still some elk meat and, you know, very fortunate in that regard. It's always nice to have more. And I do like me some Golden Krispies. Get, getting about that time of season. They're freaking delicious in the summertime. When it's hot, you come off the water, you can put them in the and yeah, get a cold beverage. Delicious, but springtime, it's also, it's always a good time for going to Krispies, y'all. We're done with battling cats. We find ourselves on a Texas highway now, drastically changing conditions with the sun coming out finally and the mist has dissipated. So got a little word from uh, our good buddy, John B, who I hardly ever fish with um, on my channel or his channel but we do a lot of Guggen Squad videos together and um, so that's what we're going to go do. We're doing some more Guggen Squad videos. Pardon the highway noise. Had to pull over and get some agua. Stopped at the Bucky's and got me some pecans, some sugar pecans. Y'all know what I'm talking about. It was weird. It, people were wondering like, are you going fishing man? I hear them fish have corona. I'm like, well, I guess I'm gonna get it too. I just got an update saying uh, the, my county that I'm living in, the shelter in place situation here in the next 24 hours. So we're just kind of playing this by ear, y'all. I'm, I'm going out west, but 
I, I'm on standby to go home in case things get crazy. These are crazy times. Anyway, I gotta wet my whistle because these pecans are drying me out. But I got a boat. It's halfway full of gas. I got a truck. It's full of diesel. Let's go give it a dangle. Okay, amigos, we made it to the ramp. Now, I have to share with you this. This is the most hoity-toity, highest priced boat ramp I've ever been to in my life. It was $30. I sat there, I tried to, I was like, no, this is, no, is that a joke? Are you serious? $30, $30. I didn't spend that much on diesel getting here. This is, uh, I might, I might hang this, like mount this, because this is the record uh, highest priced boat ramp launch I've ever seen in my life. If you're wondering, this is on Possum Kingdom Lake. A little too much for a little dangler like me. And not only that, the parking is terrible. Like the parking is at least 100 yards away from the boat. So I am just, uh, I'm just all flabbergasted by this. But the reason I'm launching here is because John B has got us an Airbnb somewhere close to here and I saw that this was the closest ramp. If I don't catch fish today, this is definitely the, the biggest catch. This is my PB boat ramp fee. Let's get down here to this ramp. Oh, it's terrible too, the angle. The angle's so bad. My gosh, I'm a little sour, y'all, I apologize. It's been a weird day. Started out with a cat, had a you know drastic weather change, got excited to go for the dangle, then corona all over the news. One thing I really enjoy though, Getting in my bass boat, just getting out there on the water, just me and the fish. That's it. There's no news, there's no tweets. I give little Instagram updates every once in a while, but I, I love to focus on the fish and make videos about it. That's what I love to do. So, new lake, new ramp. Let's get her done. What an interesting ride that was. I say interesting because I've watched the water color change a couple of times. Like, as I'm looking out here, I'm seeing mud on the other side. I just went through mud water for miles. And then it started to shift right here where some, I guess some rockier outcrops are bringing in clearer water from runoff. I'm just gonna bank fish, you know? I noticed that little change in bass, anywhere you go, they're always creatures of change, or uh, they're creatures of habit, but they, they hang around changes. So anytime you see like a point or a drop or, you know, brush that they're contrasting banks, I tend to like it. Do I have a spinnerbait on board? I believe I do. March, April, spinnerbait. It's, it's got juice. So I'm just gonna run down this bank fairly quickly and just see if we can get bing bonged here. Wow, all the, ooh, wow. That is a shad, alicious shad topia there. Wow, just noticed that. So a lot of shad in this creek, I guess. New water excitement, that's what's happening for me. Trying to figure out how much higher is the water levels right now. The back of this pocket could be juice. If it stays clear, it's gonna be warm. So fish are naturally, like all fish, are gonna be wanting to go back there just to warm up today because it's been so cold. Oh, God, I'm kicking myself. I thought my camera was rolling. I'm so sorry, guys. I'm so sorry I saw this fish. Oh, yes. Heck yes. Oh, this day has been crazy, but God, that feels good right there. I was sitting there talking to the camera and I thought it was rolling the whole time. Sorry. I'm back here in the very back of the creek. There's all sorts of species up shallow. There's bass that are cruising, fresh ones. I just saw one like seven. It just kind of looked, looked at my bait and didn't take it. Um, I'm seeing gar cruising around really shallow. Uh, I've been meaning to do like a gar video. 
I know that sounds weird with all these bass, but there's carp everywhere. Every once in a while, I'll see just a little black shadow like this guy. So really nice fish. Caught that on the lunker log. This is this is lunker log territory right here, big time. I'll let this guy go. Got the poles down to go ahead and send a photo of this guy to John. Let the guys know fish are here, baby. Look at that. They're still jumping. All right, that was really cool. Only sucks is sucks I didn't get it get the strike on camera. Was, uh, the sun was in my eyes, so I couldn't really see that good. But I, I saw the fish and I just started twitching it and then oh, bam. I need another bait. These fish are just gonna be moving up in here this afternoon with being so warm. So I've got the poles down. I'm just gonna take this slunker log and Twitch it very lightly around in the shallows. That's my first uh, sight fishing bass of the year, I believe. So many shadows swimming around right now, guys. Three aught hammer hook right here, and I've got 20 pound Guggen Squad fluoro because you just never know when old Big is going to take it. There's another little bass right there. Man, I've got this just big. Needle nose gar sitting right here in front of me. He's gonna bite this thing. He took it. He's got it in his mouth right now. Trying to figure out how to eat it. Oh, he's actually trying to eat it. Oh, he let it go. I had that fish on, jeez. Ah, didn't even know it. Just pitched it around the brush and he boom, took it. Look how fat that thing is, y'all. Look how fat that fish is. Probably just moved up here. Fattening up on these shad that are loaded back here. So I'm, I'm like more actively working this bait and getting bites than I am just letting it just like slow sit there kind of the, the drag method which is kind of fun you end up watching a lot more of your bites but it's so muddy I didn't see that when I saw the first one with this lunker log it's it's pretty heavy without any weight because of the uh the salt content so you're actually able to throw it really well and then in this situation where it's really shallow water i'm fishing it on a three aught hook but if i was trying to get it to sink a little bit deeper fish slower i'd probably go with a four just because that little extra weight in the hook is is good if you're trying to get it to sink like you know at five to ten foot zone but we are literally in one foot so Go, jeez. God, I'm working it. Shallow, shallow. There's just not much more to go. Woo hoo hoo, baby. Decent male bass moving up here to spawn. Got some black dots on him. Heck yeah, baby. Oh man. Let's see rock bottom. Honors. Yeah, my troll motor is hitting the ground here, so I think we've uh, we've reached the end of our road. We just went ahead and did it. Went as far back as we could go, and we're just in the dirt. There's a couple of tactics that you can do in really shallow water like this, but mainly it's going to be plastics, and it's going to be you know almost at the surface sort of thing. Um, this time you're fishing in creeks or if you're bank fishing, I would get you a spinning rod too. Get some braid on it and you can bomb your bait. So I'm throwing, you know, like your typical bass setup with 20 pound line and everything. But if these fish were more spooky or if there was bigger fish, if I saw one, I would probably get out a spinning rod and really reduce the size of, of my line and my presence. Uh, a lot of times I turn off my electronics so there's no plinking sounds or, or anything because these fish just get spooked 
Another thing you have to have, y'all, is polarized sunglasses. And yes, I'm gonna plug Mondo Optics. If you have never used polarized sunglasses, you have to do it this time of year. Even if you're not looking at fish, if you're not bed fishing, if you're seeing that log, if you're seeing that light spot in the water, that's what makes all the difference right there. You can throw to that and then get a bite and it's it's basically like sight fishing but you're not seeing the fish. So you're you're visually looking for those little little cues and this is the time of year where it's super important. Like in this situation right here, this water is normally really clear but right now it's stained to muddy. So having the polarized sunglasses on, I'm able to look down in the water a little deeper just to see that that log or that little stick that those bass are probably going to be on. So anyway, enough blabbing. Link in the description, get you some optics. I'm going to keep casting around here. We don't have that much time left. I can hear water trickling in somewhere from the bank. So there's some sort of runoff happening. I'm just working my way out of the back of this creek. And uh, this bank, this side looks a little flatter. Water is 70. 70 degrees right now. And those bass, oh my gosh, that one, that was a defensive strike. Gosh dang. Those bass, these, these bass, this one included I'm sure, they're fat and fresh, which is what you want. Like they're not spawned out or... Sorry, I gotta focus right here. We gotta get this fish. Okay, anyway, I guess that fish doesn't wanna bite. Um, What I was saying is that all these fish are just so fresh. It's really important you keep your, uh, whatever stick bait you're throwing, that bait is straight. It has like a side to side shimmy. And if you get a kink in your worm, then it starts to uh, get twisted up on you and just kind of swirl. It doesn't look right. Oh gosh, he took my worm. Got it. He was right there though. Just grabbed the tail. He hit my bait midway as I was working it. And I've got that three odd hook on there not as much meat on the bone. So I didn't give him a chance to eat it very good. <sighs> Sun's going down. Y'all so so far backs of the creeks that's the winner that's winning the game right now uh th those fish are fresh just moving up and they're they're willing to bite which is great you know if you go to those fish midway through the spawn or post spawn they get super finicky but they're just willing to to bite your lure right now which is obviously what you want Ah, here we go. There's a jig fish. Oh, he hit it close to the bank. Oh, get up in here. Oh, I like to see that jig in the nose of your face. <laughs> oh, man, that might be the day ender right there, y'all. That is the Lil Juicy finesse jig with, uh, with actually a junior size crack and crawl nice little finesse combo that fish is a little bit more beat up but still really nice and uh that is approaching a little secondary point and that fish was not far from the bank so i'm just gonna fish my way around this uh these next couple little secondary points see if i can pick up another one and then it's uh it's gonna be time to go go in See the guys talk about the day's events. First bass on a jerk bait. Come around the main leg point. Yes. Oh my gosh, it's down there. Wow, sir, did you get that thing or what? Did you get that thing? Oh. Hey there, hey there, hey there, hey there now. Ooh. I come out here, ooh, don't you do that now. Ooh. That was close. Healthy one there. Boy, 
I came out here to the main lake point, y'all. Just working my way out. The the bait explosion. There's so much bait in here, it's unreal. So that's good. That is very good. That gives me something to go on for like main lake fishing. And then I know there have been the backs of the creeks, they're making a push. In between it's kind of weird, honestly. It's like they're either I don't know. It's just weird to find the staging ones, but sun's going down. I'm gonna make a few more casts with the jerk bait around this main lake point here. Uh, I keep saying one more cast, but it's so hard. And then I'm gonna head in. Okay, that is it. That is the ball game for today. I enjoyed my fishing experience out here today, y'all. Hope you enjoyed it with me. We got to experience really shallow water bass moving up, and I'm gonna be staying out here the next couple days. And, and actually, if everything's cool back at home, there's no like red alerts, I may stay out here an extra day and film another video uh, for this channel, but we're gonna film some Googie Squad videos, always keeping you guys locked and loaded with quality content over there. So me and John and maybe a few other guys are gonna be filming out here the next couple days. No gobbles back. I did hear a gobble, y'all. There's turkeys running around here. Speaking of turkeys, need to do a bird check. We gotta make sure the chickens are safe. I am going to get on one of my cameras right now. Hopefully I have some sort of service. Okay, they're just starting to come in. They're just starting to go in there, guys. That a girl. Get up in there. We're watching this live. I timed this perfectly. I actually know what time they usually roost. It's 8.07. Yes, I want to continue. So I actually installed a light up in there um, that will help them know to go roost because I've, I've been having issues with uh, one of them not going up to roost. And, and when I go in there and I turn a flashlight on or I turn this light on that's on the camera, uh, they always go up there, so. Okay, oh, oh, there's two up top. Are they all up there? I think I say three butts. I also had to do some other work today uh, with the chicks and the duck to get those secure. I'm actually moving them outside, but with, with the cats lurking around, it's a bit of a thing. So guys, stay tuned. Lake Life Family Channel, link down below. And y'all make sure to keep it locked right here for more fishing action this week. I'm so excited because what we found today is I think we're gonna be some of the first anglers to really go out there and see that shallow water bite occurring. It's been flooding, uh, the conditions have been terrible, but now it's heating up, fish are moving up into the shallows. I'm talking about all species. And so whoever is out on the lake right now is seeing those first waves move up. You can tell because they're just bellies bellies ready to pop fresh all right fishing freaks thank you for tuning in hanging with me for all of these videos be safe be careful out there uh, with with the corona crisis and uh be with your loved ones um godspeed god be with you and i will see you on the next one